Chapter 16 The Victorious Attitude by Orson Sweat Marden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Our Oneness with Infinite Life. He lives best and most who gives God his greatest opportunity in him. If we only knew how to live and move and have our being in him, to be conscious of this very instant, we should then know what true living means. We should be satisfied, for we should then awake in his likeness. Deep within every heart that has not dulled the sense of its inner vision is the belief that we are one with some great unknown, unseen power, and we are somehow inseparably connected with the infinite consciousness. It is a mental law that thoughts and convictions can only attract their kind. A hatred thought is a hatred magnet, and the longer we harbor it, the more steadily we contemplate it, focus our minds upon it, the larger and more powerful the hatred magnet becomes. In the early days of the great European war, a Jewish soldier, in the first line of a Russian battalion, engaged in a man-to-man -man fight with an Austrian in the opposing battalion, in their desperate encounter, the Russian Jew drove his bayonet through the breast of his opponent. As the latter, an Austrian Jew, fell mortally wounded, with his dying breath he gasped the Hebrew prayer which begins, Hear, O Israel! The Russian, realizing that he had killed a brother Jew, overcome with horror, fell fainting on the battlefield. When he regained consciousness, he was a raving lunatic. When will men realize that we are all brothers, that we are all members of the same great human family, children of the same great father-mother God? When will we see, though oceans and continents divide us, though we may speak different tongues, may differ in race, color, and creed, yet we are so closely related in thought and motive that our deepest, most vital interests are identical? Time and again, despite all outward differences, has that invisible bond of union which binds mankind to one great family manifested itself even on the battlefield. Their men who have sabred or shot at and wounded each other have become fast friends and learned to feel their brotherhood. Many and many a time has it happened that soldiers who had been bitter enemies in battle and had tried in every way to kill each other have found, while convalescing side by side, that they were really one in sympathy and feeling, brothers at heart, and did not know it. If these men had known and seen into one another's soul before the battle as they had afterwards in the hospital, they never could have been induced to fire at or try to injure one another. In spite of our failures, our blunders, our crimes, the nations are coming closer and closer together. Scientific discoveries, marvelous inventions, the extended use of steam and electricity, the conquest of the air, all these are fast welding the interests of mankind and bringing into close and intimate relation the most distant countries of the globe. The Occident and the Orient are no longer at the ends of the earth. They are beginning to know and to respect each other and to learn each from the other. They are beginning to realize in its largest sense the truth of Kipling's utterance. There is neither east nor west, border nor breed nor birth. When two strong men stand face to face, though they come from the ends of the earth, scientists are piling up proof after proof of the unity, not only of mankind, but of everything in the universe, the oneness of all life. They are demonstrating that there is but one substance, one eternal force or essence in the universe, and that all we see is but a varying expression of it. Everything about us is merely a modification, a change of form of its universal substance, just as electricity is manifestation of force in various forms, in its unchained power, in rendering giant trees and destroying huge buildings, and as harnessed by man in moving trains, in lighting homes, in furnishing heat for cooking, and in many other domestic and industrial devices. The lesson of lessons for us to learn from this is our inseparable union with the Creator of life, that everlasting, eternal unity of spirit, that oneness with the Father which Christ came to teach. I and the Father are one. I am the vine, ye are the branches. We are as closely united one to the other, and all to the Father, as are the branches to the parent stem. When we are conscious of our union, of our co-partnership with the infinite, we feel an added power, just as the branch feels the force of life currents flowing into it from the vine. Severed from the parent stem, the same branch would not feel so confident. It would soon find that of itself it could do nothing, 
and in a short time it would wither and die the moment we pluck a flower from its stem it begins to wilt and fade because it is separated from the source of its life cut off from the great chemical laboratory of nature from the creative miracle-working energy of the sun the soil and the atmosphere it dies within a few hours the moment we are cut off from our divine source we begin to wither shrivel and die as long as we remain separate nothing can stop this fatal blighting process when we are not fed from our source we are like the branch severed from the parent vine like the flower plucked from its mother stem my experience has shown that people who from different causes feel cut off from connection with the divine source of things suffer intensely from fear they are filled with a vague but overmastering terror which presses upon them with greater force because it is unseen unknown they dimly feel that like meteors in the sky which have passed beyond the controlling gravity governing the other heavenly bodies they are separate unrelated human atoms without assurance that they are under a protective guiding sustaining power victims of extreme nervous diseases are often overwhelmed with a sense of utter isolation of being cut off from every sustaining force and they are terror-stricken just as a child who has lost its way and knows not where to turn temporarily and in a lesser degree people who are terrified in a thunderstorm and rush to a cellar anywhere to hide themselves from the threatened danger suffer from this feeling of separation of aloneness all who are affected in this way would be greatly benefited by dwelling on such biblical passages as in him we live and move and have our being the father in me and i in the father these are strictly scientific truths we could not live or move or have any being apart from the power that made us that sustains and supports us and the consciousness of this gives a steadying buttressing sense of security and safety that nothing else can our individual strength comes from our conscious oneness with omnipotence just as our national or corporate strength is derived from union with one another each human being is like a drop of water in the ocean he is not independent he cannot work alone consciously or unconsciously he is a part of the masses all around him he is touched by the other water drops on every side and his existence his success is largely dependent upon his union with the others even if a drop of the ocean could separate itself from the mass and should try to live its own life in its own way it would soon cease to be as a drop a man cannot accomplish much alone his success depends on his union with other men his dignity and strength are reinforced by the organization or association of which he is a unit as a cable is reinforced by the sum of the strength of its separate wires nature says humboldt is unity in diversity of manifestation one stupendous whole animated by the breath of life when we come into the conscious realization of the truth that we are a part the most important part of the stupendous whole created by god and that we are working in cooperation with him we will come into possession of a power and dignity which will make our lives sublime the greatest minds of all ages have drawn their strength from the invisible source from their vital connection with a power which creates and works through every one of us they have also believed in the great mission of the race believed in a divine plan running through the universe which works for righteousness and shapes the destiny of the race this faith in the godward movement of the great human current has characterized even those who did not openly profess any religious faith their belief in the divinity of humanity has been a strong factor in their character and the root source of their power this same faith this unquestioned confidence in the divine cosmic intelligence has given more comfort has brought more peace of mind and happiness to vast multitudes of human beings than any other thing indeed it is the only thing that can bring us true peace enduring happiness there is something beside brain force needed to make a man a real constructive power in the world and that is his divine connection his being in the current which runs godward without this essential notwithstanding all that the mind and the body can do for us we feel a void in our being a great lack a longing a yearning for something we know not what without this even though we have the most complete physical and mental equipment we are like a new electric car ready for service 
thoroughly equipped in every detail except the trolley pole which makes the connection with the electric current completion satisfaction divine energy can only come from attuning ourselves to something beyond the physical and the mental plane we must put up our trolley pole and tap the infinite source of power or else we are so far as true progress is concerned in the position of the car that is not connected with the motor force that alone gives it power to move forward we must tap the divine current running godward through contemplation through prayer through noble deeds unselfish service honest endeavor to live up to our best we cannot make connection with the divine power through any selfish cause any greedy deed it is a strange thing that human beings will take the chances of cutting themselves off from this mighty current which runs truthward justiceward and godward and try to make a substitute of their own puny strength yet every time we consciously do wrong every time we depart from the truth every time we commit a dishonest unworthy act do a mean contemptible thing we separate ourselves from this current and lessen the omnipotent grip upon us we break our connection and become prey to all sorts of fears and doubts someone has truly said that when a man has committed an evil act he has attached himself to sorrow because of the unity of all life he has established relationship between himself and the whole human current of vicious influences he has made connection with all the forces of the universe that conspire to drag him down to draw him still further away from the creator and inspirer of all good the converse is equally true let a man do a good deed commit himself to a noble work and all the creative uplifting forces will rush to his aid he will be reinforced by the added power of all others working in the same spirit on the same plane all good things vibrate in unison they belong to the same family so all bad things vibrate in unison and belong to one family attract one of them and you attract all the others because they are on the same plane a discouraged despondent mood for example makes connection with the whole discouraged and despondent family the whole failure army and when we make this connection our entire being is adjusted to the gloomy discouraged vibration if we harbor the poverty thought the fear of coming to want we unite ourselves with all the poverty vibrations in the universe and whatever has an affinity with poverty rushes towards us through the current we have established on the self-same principle let one think cheerful optimistic thoughts let him make connections with the current of opulence of the generous overflowing abundant supply of the creator and he allies himself with all the helpful productive creative forces in existence at one time it was thought that we could get no knowledge or impressions excepting through the five senses but we know now that there are many other avenues by which we communicate with one another there is a mental a spiritual communication which is more intimate more real than any we can make by physical contact or expression we can sit beside those who are in sympathy with us for hours without touching them without a word being spoken without a look and yet enjoy the sweetest and most delightful converse we are conscious that our minds are intercommunicating in a deeper more subtle satisfying manner than is possible by means of physical contact or through the senses in fact there are many occasions in life so sacred that we feel mere words would profane distress disturb rather than help or comfort we are aware that they are too coarse to convey the finest sentiments that they are too bungling too awkward to carry the expressions of sympathy of love back and forth from soul to soul that are in tune with each other the message of love teaches that the love of life is a single heart beating through god and you and me one life runs through all creation's veins the mind sees beauties which the physical eye never beholds the mental ear hears harmonies melodies which the auditory nerve is too gross to perceive the soul through its closer union with god receives perceptions which even the mind cannot comprehend by means of this divine connection through the great within of ourselves we can accumulate power that will revolutionize our lives right here in our own being we can loose streams of energy infinitely more potent than any physical power 
we know that the great cosmic ether everywhere about us is filled with divine vibrations charged with spiritual force and omniscient intelligence which are always awaiting to flood our minds when we make the right connections and are ready to receive them this cosmic ether or universal substance is the source of all supply as well as that of that divine power which most people shut out of their lives because they do not know how to unite themselves with it they resolutely shut their minds to the divine inflow by refusing to believe in anything that is not demonstrable through the senses most of us are very skeptical of the reality of the unseen we are doubting thomases who can be convinced only by the material by that which we can see or feel if children could only be trained in a different atmosphere if they could be made at the start to reach out mentally into the unseen realities and utilize them for their own purposes just as we mold and fashion material things there would be comparatively few failures in life it was intended that man should live in perpetual contact with the power that created him that would keep him in tune with all that is healthful and good and pure and true but unfortunately we are constantly losing our connection and thus making ourselves impotent weak when we could be potent strong creative to live in wireless communication with the divine current that runs through all creation is to be in touch with divinity indeed is to be divinely successful no power outside of ourselves can cut us off from communication with this current even the worst criminals those who have been cut off from human society may still be one with their source if they choose the creator has not cut them off has not discarded them they have broken the connection themselves the creator would not blast with a thunderbolt would not crush with his wrath the most profane wretch that ever lived even though he should curse him for creating him the great love of the father would still sustain him keep him alive feed him permit the same beautiful sun to shine upon him as upon the greatest saint all the blessings of nature would still be there for his enjoyment would be given as freely to him as to the most devoted worshipper if we could only grasp this superb truth our oneness with the great creative principle of the universe it would transform the race it would banish fear it would bring peace and harmony into our lives it would give us a sense of security and satisfaction and happiness such as we never knew before until we realize our unity with god and one another we can never grow to our full stature we can never utilize the manifold powers at our command nor shall we ever reach that glorified manhood which matches the creator's pattern of the possible man until it is ingrained into every child's nature that he was not only created by his father mother god but that he is forever after vitally connected with him that he is nearer to him than his own hands and feet closer than his own heartbeat this oneness of the child with his maker is the principle which must ultimately mold the race into perfect beings end of chapter sixteen end of the victorious attitude by orson sweat marden